Now let's jump into our first segment of our um, of our podcast, Cover 2 Podcast. It is our breakout stars of the season so far. We are both going to cover two players that we feel are breakout caliber players. And we are going to start things off. Bangle, I think you can be the uh, the guinea pig for this project. And sure, I would, mm-hmm. we are going to start with the young man by the name of Kevin Byard. Kevin Byard, safety, went to uh, Middle Tennessee State. Uh, he was one of my highest graded cover safeties coming into that draft. And last year he got minimal snaps. However, he did play pretty well, but this year he's taken his game to a whole nother level. And it's not even just the interceptions that he's getting. He does currently lead the league in uh, interceptions. He has six, including a three interception game and then coming back and getting two interceptions in the next week. And, you know, that is against the Browns and then the Ravens, two subpar offenses. But being a safety, it's not necessarily about getting interceptions all the time. It's being in the right place at the right time, being a force in the run game, and um, not allowing yourself to get beaten over the top. And Kevin Byard has done an excellent job. He has not gotten beat. He's made those plays. He's come down into the box. He has an interception in the box playing man coverage. He's just, to me, the complete package of what you're looking at uh, in a free safety. But he can also come in the box, stop the run, play man coverage. He's an incredible player. His six interceptions are league leading, as I mentioned earlier, and he's earned every single one of those. Very, very good player. Surprising, yes, but, you know, the progression's there. He's going to transform into one of the top safeties in the NFL if he's not already. Yeah, I mean, he's been having an excellent season. He's shown to be able to be a ball hawk to both play inside and outside. Um, He demonstrated both um, at the Combine the – actually, I don't know if he went to the – I don't think he was invited to the Combine coming from Middle Tennessee. He wasn't. At his pro day, he displayed pretty much elite level or close to elite level agility and speed at that safety position, posting a 4.48, posting an excellent three cone at 6.73, both above 85th percentile. And he warranted that third round pick. You see the growth as a player. You see a lot more decisiveness in his movements. You see him not only being a talented player with good range, but he's also a communicator on that defense. So for me, I think the the Titans' pass defense has definitely improved. They do have a good pass rush to their credit, but I think Bayard has definitely helped evolve that defense in a little bit of a different way, him and Adoree Jackson um, and Logan Ryan. All yeah, I'm three not, a, of them. not a huge fan of Adoree Jackson. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. got to keep evolving if yeah. he's going to be you know that first-round pick that the Titans wanted him to be. I didn't have a first-round grade on Adoree Jackson. He's yeah. a decent player, but... He's, he's electric okay. on special teams. Oh, of course. But yeah. that, I think that's the value. They were one of the worst special teams in football last year. So, I mean, they also are using him on offense a little bit, which is a whole separate issue. But he's not the he's not the topic for this uh, <laughs> no. for Kevin this Byard. discussion. Yes, it's Kevin Byard. Um, so now we are going to be talking about the next topic or the next person, and that is going to be Robbie Anderson. Anderson is going to be my topic for this. He is 6'3", 190 pounds, out of Temple. He was an undrafted free agent on the New York Jets. And 6'3", ran a 4'3", 6". I mean, that is legitimate speed. Unreal. Um, Doesn't have the best three cone, but that kind of goes par for the course with someone of his size. He's a long, lanky wide receiver. And coming into this past season, he was a talented player, but he wasn't a transformative player. We looked at the Jets wide receiving core and we said, okay, Quincy Inunua, he's a really talented player. He's going to be the number one on that team. Then he got hurt. After that, we said, oh, they don't have anybody. And Robbie Anderson took exception to that. And he has literally run with it. I mean, you're going to see some clips here where he is beating guys like Desmond Trufant and Malcolm Butler like they are third string corners at a D2 college. It's just he has such a good combination of size and speed He's so much of a speed threat that you can't jam him, per se, because if you do, you're going to lose in a foot race. But he's also tough at the point of contact. He can run very crisp routes, and he can turn you around with some good foot placement. He is a player that 
is definitely gone from a low-end wide receiver to a respectable player, and he can keep getting better. I'd say he's not a true number one by any stretch, but he's absolutely a talented number two on a lot of teams, and he can keep getting better. His hands need a little bit of work. His consistency, a little bit of work, but he's young. He's only 24 years old, and he's tough, too. He plays with a chip on his shoulder, you can tell, week in and week out. All right. Next up, we have Bengals' second player. Yannick Ngakwe, former Maryland um, defensive end. And he's just someone that was solid last year as a situational pass rusher down there in Jacksonville. And now with this improved defensive line down in Jacksonville, Yannick Ngakwe as a starter has really gotten the opportunity to really shine. Of course, they drafted Dante Fowler Jr., and uh, Yannick Ngakwe has really stolen the spotlight over the former number one overall pick oh, with yeah. multiple, multiple sack games with uh, two sacks over Houston in week one, two sacks against the Jets in week four, two and a half sacks against the Colts. And those are below average offensive lines for the most part. Houston yep. isn't terrible, um, but they are definitely below average. Yannick Ngakwe has played mostly left end. And Calais Campbell has been a, such a problem to block, but Yannick Ngakwe can't be overlooked. He's someone who has good speed per, for the position around a 4.75 at the combine, which isn't necessarily elite speed for an edge rusher, but he has elite burst. And that's something that gets him around defensive, uh, excuse me, offensive lines, offensive yeah. tackles, and uh, even through the, like the B gap and beating guards. Yannick Ngakwe, phenomenal pass rusher. He's playing an 85.1 pass rush grade on PFF, I believe which yep. is good for 12th overall, something like that. Yep. So he's actually sixth. Pass rusher. He's sixth in pass rush productivity so far on the season. He has 34 total pressures. He has yeah, right. uh, 20, 23 hurries, four hits, and seven sacks. Um, he has played from the defensive right side 74.8% of the time, which is lower than you'd expect for a lot of pass rushers. But he has done a really good job with that. Clayus Campbell has really mixed up. He's been the that gadget moving around type of piece that you see interior, exterior. But Ngakwe has definitely performed well. He plus the combination of him, Fowler, uh, Malik Jackson, and Clayus Campbell, plus that secondary. I mean, I think there's a lot of things, but you're going to see on your screen right now, he gets around Andrew Whitworth a couple times, and that is crazy. I mean, he beats him clean right off the snap. And Andrew Whitworth is one of the best left tackles in football. And he has a really good set of pass rush moves. He has such a good burst to the outside and good speed move that you have to respect it. And using that, he has a good counter inside swim move, which the combination of moves, that's something that comes with experience. And it's definitely a really, really useful thing to have. As you can see, tough at the point of attack and burst just to engulf whomever he's chasing after. Yeah, another thing about Yannick Ngakwe, though, is he makes his sacks count. Last year in eight sacks, four forced fumbles. Yep. And even this year in six and a half sacks, three forced fumbles. He creates turnovers, you know, half the time that he gets to the quarterback, which is I mean, fairly insane, I think, for it most is. defensive ends and, and pressures. Just really, really underrated player in the NFL. Uh, one of my favorite players to watch. And uh, I think you can only expect bigger things from him in the future as one, he continues to get better. One thing that I do think he needs to improve upon is his run defense. He oh, is, poor. He is, 50, is poor. he is 59th in run stop percent among 4-3 defensive ends, which yeah. that's that's bad. At, out of 63 guys with 25% of the team snaps. So definitely an area of improvement, but he's young. Um, if I remember correctly, he was born in 1995, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, he's 22 years old. <laughs> That's unreal. So yeah, to do is. to have that type of production in his ages twenty one and twenty two seasons, that is uh, that's that's a special talent right there, especially for a third round uh, player. And lastly, we have my second player, and that is Brian Body Calhoun for the Cleveland Browns. Body Calhoun is a very he's an interesting player. Um, I would agree. He's got interesting size for the position. Yeah, uh, he's 5'9", 193. He's 24 years old. He is went undrafted out of Minnesota. Go Golden Gophers. Um, but he is a player who showed a lot of improvement from year one to year two. In year one, he was targeted pretty heavily. 
Um, I believe was targeted every six coverage snaps, which was second most on the Browns. And they basically picked on the rookie, but he held his own. He wasn't spectacular, but you heard his name and you saw him make some plays. But he went from below average to playing at one of the highest levels in the NFL so far this season. Coming in, and it's not just a testament to how bad Jamar Taylor's been, because Jason McCourty's been great as well. So it's not like they're just only going after Taylor. They are specifically avoiding him and targeting Jason McCourty, who has been excellent. Yeah, it's proven to be a mistake. <laughs> yeah, I mean, coming into this season right now, just looking at it, Brian Body Calhoun has been the least targeted quarter, corner in the NFL at 15... Uh, 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 a target every 15.5 coverage snaps. The second best is Patrick Peterson at 10.5. Jeez. That is unreal. He is also allowing the fewest yards per coverage snap at 0.34. Next is Jimmy Smith at 0.43, then Pat Pete, then Marshawn Lattimore. Coverage snaps per reception, he is second behind Patrick Peterson. Peterson's allowed a reception every 31.6 coverage snaps. Calhoun every 31, and then third is Josh Norman at 22. So it's a huge drop-off. He's been targeted on 217 snaps 14 times for 7 receptions, 74 yards, only 15 yards after the catch, and one touchdown. So he doesn't have an interception yet. He did get his hands on a few passes, including that pick that was uh, in week number one that was tipped to Derek Kindred in the end zone against Roethlisberger. But Body Calhoun has been one of the most consistent corners in the NFL this season and he's also done a good job coming from the slot. He's played a little over 50% of his snaps coming from the slot. He's allowed four receptions on nine targets. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Fewest yards per covered snap from the slot as well. Um, most cover snaps per target, most cover snaps per reception. It's just across the board, he has very good speed on the field and his change of direction is really where he gets there but he also plays with a toughness stats aside coming from a guy like Calhoun he plays with a chip on his shoulder both in the run game and at coverage he plays tough he's always swarming to towards the ball carrier and he never takes a playoff as you saw a few clips ago gets uh, Eric Decker comes downfield and he's just very slippery at 5-9 ran a 4-4-7 but he also tackles with aggression. And that overall performance is why he and Jason McCourty have been one of the better tandems in football. It's just the safety play in terms of coverage and Jamar Taylor have really sunk the Browns secondary. Would you say he bodies people? I would say he also Calhoun's people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now that we have covered that, and my final point on him is that I think that so far this season, he's been about a top 10, top 15 corner, um, and he's been a top 5 slot corner so far this season. 